my name is Taita Zoirati, an educationist and a counseling psychologist, but packaged myself as a corporate trainer, motivational speaker, a author, life and team building coach. I, today is a great day at Mountain View School. I have worked with this school for the last 12 years, uh, either talking to the, to the learners, talking to the teachers and to the parents. Uh, and today is a special day of building capacity for our parents and especially the ones in grade 6. Uh, who are also meant to have an exam towards the end of this current year. Uh, however, whatever we were sharing today is just enlightening, enlightening the parents on their roles and responsibilities as a parent so that our children may have a successful life. We are deviating from the norm where it is only education by so saying only the teachers that are as responsible for the success of our children. It's always important and that is what we were doing today to remind the parents that once you have a child is a special responsibility you have been given by God. And also important to remember as a parent that the same God who gave you a child is the same God who has denied another one a child. So for you to have a child, you have a special responsibility of uh, incubating the greatness that is in that child, of nurturing the greatness that is in that child, so that this child may live a purpose-driven life. Uh, without being so spiritual, it's important to remind parents that every child has a purpose, and that purpose is designed by God. It's not designed by, by the parent. That is why some of our children are renowned and successful doctors, others are renowned and successful pirates, others are actors and actresses, others are teachers, others are entrepreneurs, and the list is addressed. But now that these young ones have not realized uh, their potential, have not been able to realize their career path. They are still in the hands of their parents. What are we supposed to do? We have a responsibility of inculcating value in our children. And that is why we also have to be very careful on what we do. There are those parents who love doing things for children that they did not receive from their parents. Kind of, part of it being compensation. I did not wear shoes when I was young, so I needed to buy my child shoes. Sometimes they don't even need them. And especially in the area of the social media. Sometimes as parents, we are competing with our peers on whose child has the most recent um, uh, phone. Uh, who has the most complicated computer game, etc., etc. But it's always important for me uh, to mention to the parents that there has been a lot of abuse. Part of it, um, even including sexual harassment of children through social media. Because we have had people who are weird, uh, people who are not well healed, uh, and therefore, they, they, they create social media platforms, they lure young ones, and sometimes because they lure them with money, they end up falling in that trap. So instead of just exposing our children uh, to the phones and whatever it contains, there are many other areas where we can expose our children to. Irrespective of their age, especially now from grade 4, grade 6, grade 7 uh, upwards, you may expose your child. As your child may want to become a pilot. Why don't you export that expose that child to an airport and where possible they take a flight uh, from the cockpit. That will not only inspire them but it will also put in them a drive, intrinsic drive that will propel, propel this child from becoming that what he has uh, seriously desired. So sometimes our children are finding themselves in trouble simply because us parents have abdicated our responsibility of parenting, of uh, brooding them, of nurturing them, of guiding them, of showing them the way. So
So today, we were looking at how can, apart from putting God first, how can I make my child a priority that I walk with them? If I have to walk with them for far too long, it would be like until they are 25. So after that, maybe I can do whatever else I want to. But in this growing, uh, when these kids are growing, at this age, they need your physical presence. They need to be with you. They need to see you doing what you have always said that you would want to do. And that calls for sacrifice. Parenting in the 21st century is a great challenge. It is not easy because uh, we are talking of an information age. Long time ago, we talk of industrialization. We also talked of uh, the agriculture revolution. Right now, we are talking of information age. The world has become a global village. Although we don't know who is the chief of that village, children can be able to get to know what is happening uh, in Australia on real time, in Asia, UK, uh, Europe, USA, on real time. So we also need to build our capacity as a parent so that we know how we are going to handle these children as they grow up. And that is basically what we were trying to do today. Um, maybe in a summary, it is important that we take our children to God. Irrespective of where you worship, irrespective of your religion, uh, let your child uh, link your child with God from a very early age. From there, they will be able to pick the values that are important. It's also important that you have value, quality time with your child, doing something. It is not everything that is bought from a supermarket. Sometimes it might help you, for those of us who grew up in the village, we used to make wonderful balls. You do not necessarily have to buy a ball from a supermarket. You can sit down with your child and make that ball. The issue is not making the ball. The issue is the time you are availing for your, for your child. And for any reason, if you have to separate, because you have seen divorce and separations happening with the parents, allow me to advise the parents that it's good to separate maturely. Handle separations, handle divorce maturely, because when you loved each other, these children were not there. So now that you have to call it quits, don't bring them into the picture. See how you do it maturely, uh, so that you do not affect the life of this child. As we um, share our knowledge with the teachers and parents and also the learners who we call the educational triad. Uh, education cannot drive. We cannot have successful education without the teachers, uh, currently referred to as facilitators, the parents and the learners. Allow me to say that CBC, competence-based curriculum, is the best of the best. And what we might be experiencing now could be what would call teething problems. For the parent, you know when you have been given birth to a child, when they reach the stage of teething, you know, their temperature sometimes change within a whisker. There are many ch challenges that are associated with the teething of a child. And I think what this curriculum is going through is more or less the same. I, I would want to say that one good thing with the CBC, uh, competence-based curriculum, is that it focuses on the individual learner. And once it focuses on the individual learner, it looks forward to unleashing the potential in that learner. There are those who may require mathematics to drive in life, but there are those who would require oratory skills like speakers and teachers to drive in life. So you the life on your, on your lane, you the life on where uh, you have been created to. Therefore, CBC introduces the 21st skills. As I have rightly said, we are in the 21st century. And the parenting in the 21st century cannot be the same as the ones of the 20th century. That being the case, even the skills that we need to develop, we have to make our education system and curriculum more relevant and credible to the current life situations that we have. And therefore, I would urge all of us to embrace it. And once we embrace it, I would want to liken this to a marriage. Sometimes not 
nobody feels that I'm mature enough to marry. But once you get yourself into marriage, you get to learn how to live. And even before you learn how to live, a child comes. So you learn how to live and how to parent at the same time. Similarly, this new system is promising. It has a great future for our children. It does not have to compare. We don't have to lose children who commit suicide because they got very low grades or they got very low marks. We don't have to traumatize people. We don't have to classify people that they are nothing simply because they did not live in class. We have had people who are successful, who are impacting this world, and yet they were, had been chased away from school because the, it was said that according to the grading system, they don't know anything. So this is the time. We are the first parents to experience the same. I would want to urge all of us, let's embrace it. Let's bring it to heart. Once we have a positive attitude towards it, embracing it and perfecting it becomes very easy.